It's the Channel Mom Show with Jenny Dean Schmidt. We're here for you. Brought to you by the Healthy Marriage Project. Just click on one of their ads to find out about a healthy relationship workshop near you. Hey, welcome back to the Channel Mom Show, moms. We are here for you. We really are. Uh, we want to help you. We want to encourage you. We want to thank you for all that you do to raise your children well in this world because we do need good moms to raise their kids well. So we have a, a well-functioning society, frankly, because when that falls down, then our society falls down. I am talking about something this morning that I'm sure if my daughter tuned in, she'd be shrieking that mom's talking <laughs> the S-E-X word. She's like, Mommy, why did you talk about that this morning? I couldn't listen. Um, she does not like it when I talk about the S-E-X word. If you have children that are not going to like it, please tell them they can leave or go play or something. Um, but this is really important. Tammy Borges is here from the Center uh, for Relationship Education. They do incredible things. She's going to tell you how you can tap into some of their uh, workshops and so on if you want to send your teenager or even get some help for your marriage if you've got a marriage in trouble they they do incredible work and they really save marriages and they help teenagers make good decisions about sexual relations so welcome back to the show tammy thank you i'm going to just let you get into we got you know 14 minutes i really want people to hear some of the research that you have your hands on that is incredibly convincing and kind of gives us a new picture of america and frankly, I think points to some of the reasons that we uh, are in trouble with our some of our kids doing things like shooting up um, you know, schools and movie theaters and churches. Uh, I, I mean it. And I know that's a, a salacious thing to say, but I mean it. Uh, and if anyone has a comment, 303-297-1510. You've got some amazing statistics, even that go into political party uh, views about these things. And we can talk about those. Which would you rather do well, first? The stats about what's what's happening in our country or, or how well, politically let, people... Let's just quickly frame it, Jenny. The reason, why why would I come here at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning armed with all of my research? Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. We both would just say kids should probably wait to have sex uh -huh. until they're married. Family should be strong. But sometimes when we say that, we get such disagreements, such opponents, but you're not accepting of this kind of family or you're not accepting of this kind of behavior. Or it, we feel like we're so wrong and it feels right to some of us. Well, the research is on our side. And it is. so that's why I do come armed with research because I don't want to be saying anything to step on anybody's toes. You and I both have a conversation where I love all kinds of people. So do it's, I. It's, it doesn't matter to me if you're if you've been divorced. Yeah. I actually have been divorced. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But I know the fallout from it, too. Yes, you and do. So <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let me tell you, it's not a good thing to go there. But uh, so we love all kinds of people. Single moms are out there working their tail off yep. to provide their family with a Merry Christmas. There are more and more single dads working their tail off yep. to try to be emotionally there for their children, which is a different emotionally there than a female can give their children, too. Absolutely. Yet, so they're both trying to do it. But we come armed with these statistics. Because people put us in a box and say, you're just not very accepting of others. And I want to make it really clear, I'm very accepting of others, but there's some hardcore research. The piece in front of me right now I think is so funny because sometimes it's like, well, you're a Republican or you're a conservative and Democrats believe this way. This piece right here was put out by the National Absence Education Foundation, and they did a giant survey, and it says national survey indicates nearly 9 out of 10 Republican parents and eight out of ten Democratic parents support abstinence education. It's wow, yeah. and, uh, and the and people that, that's the clear majority. Last time I looked, but the people on the other end of that issue, people who do not support abstinence education, would suggest to you that most of the company a country agrees with them, right? And but most of the country really doesn't. Yeah, and most of the country we just we're just not as dominant in our words. We're trying to come up with those clever tunes, but when you can just say, "Oh, you're so unaccepting of society." You get put down and people get on the other bandwagon. We're very accepting of society. Yeah, and I want you to get to this research. I want to say one thing. I'm so glad you said that, Tammy. You're, you're more profound than I am by far this morning. We are called haters. We're called bigots. We're called uh, judgers, all kinds of things. If we stand up for conservative, what people call conservative, right. idea of marriage works, family, you know, keep families intact, that works. Neither you nor I are here to condemn any single parent or any other, you know, these these families that are struggling in various ways that they might think that we're judging. We're not right. judging. We're not. We're, we're trying to say they're, and by the way, I've made mistakes too, and you've made mistakes. So I'm not here to say, hey, I'm perfect. You should do it my way. That's right. not the point. The point is research suggests there is a right way to do this, and if you want 
to have your kids be happy, and if you love your children, why not teach them what right. works best? Right, right. And when we, I, I think everybody knows when you look at history, it can avoid making the same mistake twice. I mean, even our country economically looks at history to yeah. try to avoid making the same mistake twice. And you were making the point during the break <laughs> that Rome and some of these these countries that have fallen, uh, things that are happening in Europe now with the downfall of their societies, you can trace it back to the downfall of families. Right. When we don't value families any longer, then societies start to crumble a little bit. I'm not a great sociologist, anthropologist, but yeah. it's definitely true that families are part of the glue of a healthy society. Yeah. I'm not saying there's not societies, but a healthy society. Yeah, amen. And once amen. again, when we're talking about all this, we're talking about healthy marriages, healthy families. Yeah, right. There's definitely families that shouldn't be together. Yeah. There's definitely families that are not healthy. And sick marriages, yeah. But yeah, exactly. Okay, so give us some stats because so, I think they're well, fascinating. I, I, I think this is remarkable. So here, here we are. And we, we have Democratic and Republican parents pretty much on the same page, virtually 10%. That's pretty much on the same page. And we've got... When right it comes here. to teaching your kids about abstinence. Right, right. Yeah. So one of the questions is, I'd like my teen to wait for sex until marriage. Guess what? 87% of African-American parents are, are single, are married, want their teenagers to wait. wait. 87% of that. We only have 73% of Caucasian parents wanting that. And then um, all parents are like 78%. 78% so, would yeah, like their kids yes, to wait. Yes. But yet exactly. they're afraid to have that conversation with them. I, I, it's a lot of fear. Yeah, it's a lot There's of fear. There's a lot of fear. So, so um, we were talking about tips. Yeah. And just a quick tip is don't be so scared. Talk about things you see. I'm looking out. I'm looking out of your studio right here. There's things to talk about with kids. Yeah. People have said to me, what? What, how did you do it as a parent? I go, I never stop talking. I'm so tired of talking. You yeah. talk about everything. Yeah. And so sex naturally comes up. Drugs naturally comes up. Family breakdown naturally comes up. You, you, you're watching a movie, ask them about it. What are your thoughts about it? How do you feel about that? What do you think would have happened if the show would have turned out this way? Yeah. You know, just, yeah. just keep talking about it. There is but, fear. There is fear that you're uncool or that you're going to be... Um, too unaccepting of, of their views or that all their friends are doing something. So for you to go counter to that is going to be unaccepted by your child. Right. So there is fear. And I just, you and I are both urging every parent out there, if you really care about your child and about them being happy when they're adults, then talk about this stuff. And, and once again, what, why would you do it? You would do it so you can leave your kids a legacy of they know how to pick out a great partner someday and have a great long-term relationship, marriage relationship, and have a healthy family. That's why you do it. I don't really, some people say, you act like the sex police. I don't act like the sex police. I don't follow kids around. I don't really care. I just want them that when they're ready to be stable adults in society, yeah. they know how to do it well. Yeah. Instead of they're all troubled and mixed up. I always tell my own girls, you can, you, we'll all get to the same place. But some of us will get there with a lot more baggage yeah. than others. Yeah. And what parent doesn't want their kid to get there with less baggage to deal with throughout their life yeah. than not? Really, you're patriotic. Yeah. Because you're, I'm serious, because you're looking out for America. Yeah. You want the, us to have strong, healthy families and strong, healthy children. Right. I, I have a couple more statistics I want you to throw out there. Okay. Um, okay. And then I want you to tell people how they can get help. Uh, and they're all, you know, there are books that they don't just have to go to, for, to the Center for Relationship Education, but you right. have some great resources. Well, well, we do have some great resources, and um, I, I want to make sure we talk about that at the end. We can help you talk to your kids. We can talk to your kids with you there. We do all kinds of seminars. And then, of course, we go right into our single and married education, and we're helping save marriages. Yeah. I mean, we are awesome. helping save marriages in Denver. The, the uh, testimonies just make you want to cry. So yeah. I'd like to go there, too. But the growth of unwed childbearing in the United States from 1929 to 2008 has increased by 40%. <sighs> the percentage of children born out of wedlock from 1930 to 2008 has gone down about 57%. For an in-marriage, in-marriage. In Yes, yes. Born in marriage has gone yes. down by that much. Yes. yes. And then single parent, female headed households that are in poverty has gone up 36%. Married to family um, households in poverty has only gone up 6%. So, so if you're a single so, mom, yes. you're much more likely to be poor. Yes. So that's, I mean, it's like we collide. 
with this. We're always trying to figure out what kind of social problem to help people get out of poverty. And I know poverty, there's multi-causalities to this. Sure. But a number one is have a family. Yeah. Have this a family. Yeah, that yeah. stays together. Yeah. I know. And this, this is going to be a little bit of a racy <laughs> comment, and I, I imagine a few people won't like what I'm about to say. But what I get upset about is that we're, we're catching it after the fact. So our, gov- our government will say, okay, we're going to help all the single moms by giving them this kind of aid and that kind of aid because they're in poverty. So let's let's hand out aid to all the single moms, which kind of enables them to become single because then the government comes in and, and rescues them from the fact that they don't have a husband. But if we had just helped them from the get-go right. to stay married, right. then the government would have never had to do, do that. And, and, then, get- and then, Jenny, we have to go to the heart. What's every person's heart want? What, I mean, every person, I don't care what color you are, yeah. what your political beliefs are, how much money you make, how much you don't make, where you live. To be loved. We want to be loved. Absolutely. And so uh, we call this love education. It's not really sex education. We, we're we trying to teach people how to be loved well. Yeah. Healthy people ask for what they need. We're trying to get kids to say, don't cross that boundary, whether they do it with their parents or whether they do it with their peers. We're just trying to get your kid in a, in a place where they're going to have someone love them well. Uh, teen dating violence is skyrocketed. Teen dating violence is yes. skyrocketed? Wow. Oh, yes. There's a whole teen dating violence month. I think it's February. Coming wow. up in February, 2013. Wow. Why is that? Is that? Can that be linked partly to porn because of that that nature of that? You know, no, I think it's linked to a lot of different issues. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is just boundary setting. Kids don't do boundary setting very well. Yeah. So yeah. um, I couldn't tell you the whole reason why yeah. the dating violence. That's is honest of you. Yeah, but, there's, yeah. there's never sometimes yeah. there's never a, a, a specific reason. There's just a lot but of. But I, I together. would also assume it's the breakdown of families. Once again, I mean, we love. I love it. My uh, the president founder Jonine McKenzie of the Center for Relationship Education once went to a, a huge um, a huge audience of social workers that were dealing with these kids, and and she said, "Raise your hand if you're dealing with kids with two parents." It was an audience of like 600. No one raised their hand. No one raised their hands. So, you know, when you've got a mom and a dad, guess what? The dad says, get your butt in here. Yeah. And you're done. Yeah. You can't, you yeah. know, so. <laughs> I do. I turn to my husband. And again, I'm blessed. I have friends who are single moms who I admire till the cows come home. I love them, admire them. They, 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 in many cases, they could not help the fact that they got divorced. Right. It wasn't even their choice. Right. I'm blessed to be able to say to my husband when my kids are misbehaving, honey, come right. in here because they will not listen right. to me. But as a single mom, you've got to put on both hats. You've got to put on the nurturing hat, then you take it off, and you got to put on the discipline hat. Not that dads are all discipline and no nurture, or moms are all nurture and no discipline, but you've got to wear all these hats all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And so, and who gets married to think, oh, I'm going to get married, and I'm going to have some babies, and then I'm going to raise them by myself. Who does that? Uh, nobody. Nobody does I hope, that. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, we want to pitch the fact that people can get help from you for, from the Center for Relationship Education, wonderful place. Sure. You, you have a theme, live well, love well, marry well. Right. Who, who doesn't want to do that? A lot of people don't want to get married anymore, but, but you can tell them why marriage can be right. a good thing well, for them. Well, we say if you want to get married, marry well. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so tell us so, how people find you sure. and what they can so, do. So myrelationshipcenter.com or mary-well.com. Either one of those websites takes you right to our website, and we offer classes starting in fourth grade. So we can even, we even do classes coming to your home. So how old's your oldest daughter? My my oldest son is 14, son. and my daughter's 10. Okay, there you go. So at some point in time, I'm going to call you up and just say, get 10 of their best friends, oh, and I like we'll it. do an eight-hour workshop. And we do these workshops, and right now we're going to, I've, I've I'm scheduled to do one on Jan- um, January 4th, I believe. And I know some of these little girls are like, Mom, I can't believe you're going to ruin my day. I can't <laughs> believe you're going to ruin my day. But I, I I, looked at the mom. I said, I'll double your money back because she's going to love it. Yeah. Because they're going to learn how to love well. They're yeah. going to learn what their love language is. They're going to learn how to set their bang their boundaries we were talking you were you were introducing the show by the song what love is Uh we do a whole love lust thing where the light bulb goes on you can see the teenagers light bulb go on oh that would be just lust they don't they don't know if their parents aren't talking to them they don't know and sometimes parents are talking to them and they still don't know because they get so many mixed media messages. Oh, I know. So That's why we're here. Yeah. Because we're yes, trying to fight that yes, media message yes. with the Channel Mom Show. I, we have a minute left. Um, that will be our tip for busy moms is okay. that they can come to you. So repeat the website one more okay. time. Okay. MyRelationshipCenter.org or Mary-Well.org. They both go to the same place. We have classes for adults. We have classes for teens. And we have classes for teachers. 
And Tammy, I'm going to commit to you. I want to shake on it that I want to bring you into my house to talk to my 14-year-old son oh, and 10 of hips friends. Good, good. Because awesome. we'd love to. The boys love it too. I, I think they will. I think they, they will. They do. God bless you. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Thank you.